Jazzcast Pros. Because I say I forgive you doesn't mean that that's what I did. I'm just simply using words and casting spells. Hopefully it will bind you. Once someone forgives you or I say I forgive you, that means I relinquish all animosities and all things that bind me to that time, space, and event. I relinquish the power of hold on my life that I can breathe, live, prosper, and grow. If I cannot do that, then I did not forgive you. If I cannot move on, I did not forgive you. If I could not breathe with clarity and purpose, I did not forgive you, much less myself. Oftentimes we drown in our own feelings of things and don't know why we are feeling the way we feel because of what we are doing to ourselves. What we are doing to ourselves is detrimental to our psyche. If you cannot forgive, you cannot move on. If you cannot forgive, you cannot live life in its fullest. And as fathers, it is important because we cannot have foresight. We cannot have the, the protecting factor if all we are dwelling is our trauma and is in of our past and we cannot move forward. We cannot drive. We cannot overcome. We cannot even be strong because we are stuck on what ills us, what pains us. We must change the way we think about ourselves. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Father Torch, the podcast to help you, the new and renewed fathers, cope with the anxiety and stress of fatherhood so you can be the dad you wish you had. I'm your host, Ra, founder of a Biblical Foundation, an artist, an illustrator, if you will, a father of nine. My mission is to help you reclaim your power and ease your concerns about being a father in today's social climate. I'd like to first shout out Creative Pizza for their sponsorship. I'd like to shout out the delicious and non-soggy crust of a personal pizza. Casual, fresh, and absolutely delicious. Try it out. Mention Father Torch, 766 Monroe Avenue. Folks, let's get on with our conversation today, this morning, or this evening, depending where you, where in the world you are. Uh, this one is uh, a little dear to me, and uh, I, I thank you for being here, and I thank you for your listening ear, your, your willing spirit, and your physical presence. To those who follow, to my fans, to my family, to my friends, I love you, and I thank you for your support. Forgive me of not having a recording last week. I had to find a lot of truth in myself and a lot of um, reminders of who I am. Not to say that I had crisis or confusion or breakdown, but we all need a cleansing. And this was my moment to cleanse. This was my moment to overcome some demons that I have been bust ass in a long time with. And uh, I, I had to, you know, overcome that. On top of that, I had to grow. To be truthful, I had to grow. I needed some time to grow and, and went over a little, but nonetheless, I am grateful. Welcome to today's episode of Father Torch. It's dealing with truth, mastering your thoughts, and forgiveness, if you will. All plays a part in our growth and our ability to maintain and to live. This is especially dedicated to my fathers, to my men, to my brothers who cannot seem to find a way to have a break, get a break, or it seems like everything is a dwell upon them and that they have so much, so much against them, or I should say so much against us. Truth be told, when it comes to forgiveness, you must first forgive you. It is essential and crucial and also challenging. Uh, it's, it's a very challenging process. It can be challenging depending on the individual mindset, thoughts, right? It can be especially emotional. Something that we as men are often taught the opposite to how to deal with. Between the regrets, the anger, the confusion of it all, we tend to lean toward the other side because it's familiar. It's familiar to dwell in the pain than to have a solution. Because this way, there's no work in it. There's no surprises, right? Because I know what's hurting me, so I deal with it every day until I can't deal with it no more. Which is, me personally, my opinion, suicidal. Right, you do the same thing to get different results, which some people call it insane. I call it suicidal because you're doing it to your debt, and you're not getting anything out of it. There's no honor, there's no benefit, there's no nothing to honor you or to respect what you are doing. To truly understand oneself and forgiving, you must forgive you. 
my fathers. Forgive yourself for first not knowing, not knowing that you can put down the burden. You can you are not obligated to carry such a torch burdens of the past, which should lead into your future and drown your future and, and it drowns your present. You must forgive all about you. In order to forgive yourself, you must rethink how you think about you. How you think about yourself will determine how well you can forgive others. Because you are the harshest, the biggest, and the strongest advocate in your life. And as men, we are not accustomed. We are not, not many of us, are not accustomed to compliments, to, to support, to trust right? To feel and identify what exactly what we are feeling. And as men, it's very, very unfamiliar and very, very vulnerable to be in that position. But if you're securing yourself and securing your thoughts and master of you, who and oneself is, then this won't be nothing to you. This would be another hurdle, another obstacle, another hill to walk over, another mountain to climb. You expect certain work, certain hardship. You, you have realistic expectations. But the truth be told, to forgive yourself is one of the hardest things to do. We oftentimes mix it up in thinking that forgiving someone else is the hardest thing. No, ourself is the hardest thing to do because we carry our own torches on top of the torch that's on top of us. Meaning we carry our pain, we guard our pain. And I say this many times, we as men, we guard our pain, our regret, our shame. We guard it. We, we will die versus reveal it. And it should not be. Too much of my brothers are in turmoil because the fact is they cannot be who they are, men. They cannot protect, they cannot serve, they cannot provide, they cannot do anything because they're not allowed to, at least not in a way they think they can express themselves or should. It is ordained for us to be a daily process to how to forgive. But you must be realistic. And I, I do want you to understand the realistic aspect of this. We often mistaken that if I hold on to what you have done or what I have done to myself, that somehow, some way, a, re- a redemption will happen for us. Because the fact is we held on and we didn't have to get and that, and that was a motivation. It's some type of form of motivation, don't get me wrong. But some people can hold on to such anger and such rage and, it, and, and it's the only thing in their life that's keeping them alive. But what is life if you have no purpose? And what is life if all you can do is hold on to what grudge you? It's not a clarity. It's not love. It's not. A, it's just a clinging. You you clinging because without it, you feel or think that you are nothing else. How many times have you looked in your child eye and you can't do something because the fact is you're still conflicted of your past. You're still conflicted of what you used to be and what you used to do and what happened to you and on on and onward. And I'm not saying bad things don't happen when it's like, oh my goodness, you know what the f, right? But what are you doing? about it? What are you doing to rectify that problem? What are you doing to resolve the issue or the trauma that you continue to keep living? Are you talking to someone? Are you relieving yourself? Are you going to a session? Are you going to therapy? I mean, I'm not a therapist, but again, are you going to some type of form of help to to develop a cognitive ability to overcome what your emotion is telling you is a reality? What we think about ourselves is highly, highly important. And, be, and, and to be truthful, to, 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 to give you a better understanding, I recently had to rethink how I think about me. Because my process of how I think about me is different than when someone tell me what they think of me. I had to rethink how I feel, how I smell, how I, how I keep up myself, how is my health, how is my mentality. I had to think about all these things about myself and rethink it. Am I doing it correctly? Am I growing? What is the benefit of me doing what I'm doing or currently what I'm doing without changing? And if life always changing, why am I still the same? Why am I staying the same? Why do I think that's familiar, familiarity, place, time, and space is for me? Why am I not getting bigger than to, to know myself better? What is prohibiting me? Is it me or is it someone else? Is it my thinking, of course? Is it my emotion? Maybe. Is it my actions and and that I'm associating with my emotions? Possibility. I had to rethink how 
I think about myself. And when you do such things, you open up a chakra, a, a, a place, a spirit in your mind, in your being, that you no longer like the environment you're in, the company you keep, the clothes you wear, the colors of clothes you wear, yeah, even your hair. You will start to change these things because the fact is you want to grow and you need to grow. Forgiveness helps this factor. I forgive many people. And let me say it out loud. I forgive many people for their trespasses and the downright wrong they have done to me. Because I could no longer live beneath my means, no longer live in someone else's shadow of pain and confusion. I had to forgive myself for carrying a burden that which was not mine. And that burden is that I thought I had to pick up the mantle of my father and live his life through me. Live his life what he could have been through me. Like basically convincing myself that I'm going to do better by doing the opposite or more than what he had done for me. It sounds good. It sounds great that I'm going to do the better than what my father did to me, right? But you know, It's even my mantra, right? Be the dad you wish you had, right? But that, 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 that involves changing your thought, your thought process. That involves forgiving. That, in, that involves mastering your thoughts. Doing such things invite growth, yes. Invites strategic and critical thinking. It invites vision. And it invites foresight. All these things are confident builders, are confidence builders, esteem builders. That you can do it. I can spell it. I can manifest it. I can be all that I put my mind and emotion and sight to. Having forgiveness clears up a lot of things in your heart, a lot of animosity that you hold in your chest. It even promotes posture. You start to stand taller. You start you to do less humping. Your, your back becomes a little more curved. You start to walk with your chest up, your head up instead of down. You start to talk, not mumble. You, you, you will start to see things for what they are instead of what you think they may be because you're suspicious. Your trust level and trust issues will no longer be an issue because you trust the creator and you trust the creator in you. You trust your power and your ability to be you. And let me tell you, folks, I had to learn this. I had to learn this. And it's a process. It's a daily process. Every day I have to remind myself of why I forgive myself and why I love myself and why I must take care of myself, not only for my children's benefit, but for my benefit, for myself to be all that I can be and then some. It is exhausting to keep up the unforgiving heart, the confusing, angry mind, and the physical strain of being a man in this world, especially a black man. Then to be a father, then you, you take care of and be mindful of another life. It is stressful, especially when they are trying to find themselves and you're trying to be yourself and to and to hold back what it means to truly, really, really forgive yourself and forgive others. I know we usually say a rhyme, forgiving, you, forgiving yourself, forgiving others doesn't mean you forget. It doesn't mean forget. That's true. But tell the rest of the story. It doesn't mean you forget, but it makes you more cautious, more aware. The experience and the trials and tribulations you go through for that particular, particular pain have you to be stronger because now you're more wiser. You're more stronger in experience and knowledgeable of what to expect and what to see and smell and taste in that unforgiving world which we live in, which we call Earth. We're living in a system that is not really a system because we support the very same thing that impresses us. But again, forgiveness has nothing to do with being weak has nothing to do with with, whether whether you are a higher or lower being. Forgiveness is for you. And it's even in the word, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgive, forgive. And then you put whatever in front of it. I say I forgive myself for carrying my father's anger, for carrying my mother's worries. That is a stressful way of living and thinking. Because you don't truly understand why you overthink and why you feel angry, why you feel confused in your thoughts, why you stagnate, why you overthink. It's because of these reasons. Things that you carry that is not yours. That is not yours. Why you feel your blessings are burdened more than anything else. 
or sometimes it's not what you think it is or what you ask for. You're not prepared for because the fact is now you're overthinking, you're worrying, you're doubting. So now that blessing becomes, a, instead of a sweet thing, becomes a sour thing. We must be a being of light, a beacon, if you will. Though so if it be such a thing in our lives, we have to learn to forgive ourselves. We do wrong, right? We, we know of our wrongs. We know everything what we do, our so-called good and our so-called bad. But was you remorseful? Did you repent for these things? Did you forgive yourself? Did you let go of that burning, painful torch? Did you let go of that anvil of confusion? Did you allow yourself to breathe, heal, and grow? None of us can grow without water, but yet, you know, we, 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 we play with the idea of, I do other things. None of us can live without food, but yet we eat thinking that we need to live to do it. Meaning, forgiveness is not confusing. We make it confusing because, again, it requires discipline. It requires reasonable doubt of, you know, not knowing what the other outcome would be. Because the fact is, none of us can read minds. But you know yourself. And we want to control every process that goes through us no matter how much we guard it or we release it. The point is, when you forgive yourself first, you are more declined, inclined excuse me, to be happier, feel different about the world in which the environment which you are in. You see things for what they are. You memorize what it feels like to be in this position. So you will never forget. You know how to cope deal, handle, and even discipline anyone who puts you back in that position. You are better for it. You can teach your young about it. You can teach your son, your significant other of the same thing. Girl, where have you been? I haven't seen you at work in a while. Girl, I quit and started my own business. Really? That's amazing. How did you do it? Well, I've been listening to this Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast, and it really helped me change my mindset from an employee to a CEO. All that from a podcast? Yes, the Beauty Boss Millionaire walks you through the process of starting a business and making your first million. I need that in my life. I need someone to help me. Just go to beautybossmillionaire.com or pull it up on your favorite podcast app. It's time to boss up let me read this to you right let me read you and i want you to understand this comes from the heart so whoever this may offend is not to be malicious to you it is just strictly the truth when i say truth it means that whatever i say to you may sting you not because of malice not because of wickedness it sting you because it's true it is utter truth because the fact is what i speak of is familiar and it is common a lot of us run from the truth because we always, we're always associated with pain. Life is pain. And pain and such helps you grow. Be stronger and wiser to the things you need to do and prepare you for future events or things that may occur. Okay. I wrote this for my, my loved ones. But please, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Translating forgiveness can be a challenging process, especially when grasping with emotions such as regret, anger, and confusion. It is critical to clearly understand oneself, to avoid getting lost in the world of pain. Taking the time to forgive is oft is important and accepting the situation and moving forward. Forgiveness does not mean forget, but rather understand the accepting what has happened. It is a path to peace and a way to open the door to a brighter future. I wrote that to myself. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you to understand that I do truly want you to have a future. If you cannot see yourself tomorrow in a peaceful setting, that you have not let go or forgiven yourself or others. I can honestly say whether I'm working, going to school, coming home, whatever it may be, no matter where I'm at, I have a sense of peace. I do not have a bag of drama. I do not have a... a the, the, the concept to want to be in the drama, to feel alive or be noticed and recognized because I need to feel some type of acknowledgement because everybody have a sense of belonging they want to be a part of. I don't have that need because I'm quite content and peace at peace with myself, and even more so now than I used to be. The confusion is not there because I know who I am. I recognize who and what I am. 
and I'm accepting of who I say I am. Not what others say, not what what, they, what everybody else wants to say, but what I say I am. The truth of forgiveness. The process of forgiveness is a real and concrete practice that can, that can bring about healing and the peace of both forgivers and forgiven. It involves deliberately letting go of the anger and resentment towards someone who has wronged you, encouraged wrong in you, put you in the place of wrong, but nonetheless, who has wronged you, okay? It is also to release from the, the debt you owe. And, and I want you to understand this. When you owe someone, would it be physical, financial, emotional, if you do not pay these debts, it will haunt you and haunt your children and children and your oppressors, your enemies, your friends and family knows of this very well. How many of us have heard that, oh, um, because you didn't do this, I'm not going to do, you know, X, Y, and Z for you or, you know, whole malice about the littlest thing and trying to always remind you of what you did not do and what you did not achieve and accomplish. These are the kind of things that, that people hold against you when you owe them, especially when you owe them money, right? When you owe them money, they can be very, very wicked because they can hold your peace, hold your life on hold while everyone else and everything around you grows and prosper. This means not to, not forgetting or exercising the harm, the, the harm reduction, or that, um, that you must, you know, rather make conscious decisions right? Conscious decisions about what is beneficial for you to engage anyone else when it comes to forgiveness. That means if you have a debt and someone have done something for you, it's not that you owe them, but it's imperative for you to give gratitude, to show proper gratitude, whether it be to pay back what which was given or to give back which was given. Nonetheless, a, a full circle, right? A full circle. One hand washes the other and they both wash the face. This concept is a means to not so much an end, but a, a, a relationship. To be truthful, I never was one to forgive, even myself. It may not look it, it may not have done it, but as a father, as a man, as a black man, it was hard because I thought, I, the thought, the mantle that I had to carry, the burden that which was upon me, I thought I had to do it. I really believed that I had to do it because somehow, some way, I had to do better than what my father had done. Despite that I've forgiven or gone, I still hold on to the, the pain. And I understand the pain was temporary. It seemed long, but it's temporary because I grew and I go over and I, and I overcome. But I was still holding on to that torch. I was still holding on to that mantle of pain and regret and, and, and resentment. And then it was a sense of abandonment on top of it. If I did not forgive, the truth is, I'd probably be a much different person than which I am now. And I, I have to say, I am quite proud of who I am and what I am. I am a black man. I am a father. I am an artist. I am an advocate. I am a man. I'm a man who loves. I'm a man who feels peace. I'm a man who love is my, my existence. I love my surroundings, my friends, my family. I love my children. Despite whatever takes place in my life, I have no regret, the good and the bad. I don't know about you, but I don't know when are there any other peace than to have your own sensibility of thinking freely, to liberate your body, your soul, your mind from regret, confusion, and anger that does nothing besides consume and take away. The peace of mind you get for being you, for loving you, can never be replaced with anything in this world. The closeness you get for being close to the Creator, to being liberated and free from all things, the drama, the regret, the hate, the anger, the resentment, the confusion, the whole bunch of emotions that I can't even identify with, the, the, the physicality, the limitations, the, the debts, the, the, the unrealistic expectations, the, the, the con out of control thoughts. I mean, there, there's more. There is so much more the depression, the anxiety, all of that I do not experience because I liberate myself by forgiving. 
by letting go. My fathers, let go. Let go of the expectation of living up to someone else's lifestyle, expectations, the, 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 the unfulfilled dreams. Live your life. Love your children. Instill in them qualities that will do more, not less. Take charge in the development. Take charge in all that makes them them. Believe them when they say they are who they are. And believe them when they say, I am. Love them. Love yourself. Be all that you can be and then some. Allow yourself to be free. Do not live with the conforming standards of others. Be yourself. Be loved. That's my segment for today. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about forgiveness. Let me understand the truth about being being or having forgiveness in your heart, in your spirit, and all. And also, check out Creative Pizza. The, the most casual, personal pizza you can ever get. Fresh dough, fresh veggies, unlimited at that, right? Homemade sauce, vegan meatballs, and sexy cheese. Listen, check it out. 766 Monroe Avenue. You cannot miss them. Creative Pizza, y'all. Be blessed, be guided, forgive yourself. Check out. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, check out the Healthy Illness Podcast with me, Kelly Marie, as we build healthy relationships while living with mental health conditions. I'm diagnosed and live with borderline personality disorder, major depression, and generalized anxiety. And despite those diagnoses, I've been able to live a full life. I have healthy relationships, a great career, and my mission is to help you do the same. So join me for Healthy Illness Podcast. New episodes every Monday on the Jazz Cast Pros Network found on the podcast player you're listening to right now. Be the light.